When you say um, the upper scale, um, and this is more of a common, there's also a common um, community, community room, room, a pool. Oh yeah, it's it's going to be great. Right, right. And and, and, and Model basically, also some other places that have this in some other parts uh, of Pennsylvania absolutely. as well. Okay. Yeah, and and basically, uh, you know, those uh, people that will rent there will be half commuters, young people, young professionals, and half empty nesters that are no longer want to take care of a of a big house. Right. So we're very excited about that product coming here, and the other is that. This whole area here is going to be 100,000 feet of professional office space. And other than medical, it, I don't think you can find A-level office space in the Stroudsburg area. Um, and, and this will be very much that. We're going to have two ponds with uh, fountains in them and offices overlooking there. So we feel that we can attract companies here. Um, that may want to locate from New Jersey and other areas uh, because of the convenient location that it is. Which is great, which is great. Yeah. And, and on that note, on the economic development piece and, and some of that information, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Milton Snavely Hershey was an American confectioner, philanthropist, and founder of the Hershey Chocolate Company located in Hershey, Pennsylvania, home to the Great American Chocolate Bar. Milton was born September 13, 1857 in Derry Township, Pennsylvania, a town named after the second largest city in Northern Ireland, called Derry. After a four-year apprenticeship with Royer's Ice Cream Parlor and Garden, a candy maker in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, the future chocolate king moved to Philadelphia, where he started his own candy store at the ripe old age of 18 years old. Sadly, the store went bankrupt after six years. Nonetheless, Milton remained undeterred. Mr. Hershey then traveled to various cities throughout the U.S., working for a variety of candy companies before moving to New York City and starting a new candy store. Sadly, this too went bankrupt after a few years. Nevertheless, he once more remained undeterred. Returning to Lancaster to try yet again, Milton started the Lancaster Caramel Company in 1886. This time he had success, with the Caramel Candy Company growing to over 1,300 employees by 1894. In 1900, he sold the Caramel Company for $1 million in cash and stock. Shortly thereafter, he broke ground in Derry Township to begin building the Hershey Chocolate Factory. Today, the Hershey Company is a multi-billion dollar business manufacturing chocolate for chocolate lovers worldwide. Milton passed away at age 88 due to pneumonia, but his many accomplishments live on, including the Hershey Industrial School, a school for impoverished male orphans. In 1951, the school was renamed the Milton Hershey School and provides an education to all genders and all races. What ill-fated trip did Milton Hershey nearly take? A. The Hindenburg B. The Titanic C. The Andrea Doria The Chocolate King wrote out a check to the White Star Line as a deposit for a stateroom on the Titanic. The Hershey's had to cancel their reservations at the last minute due to business matters and booked passage on the SS America instead. Does the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have your money? I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown. The State Treasury Department's Bureau of Unclaimed Property is looking for the owners of more than $2 billion in cash and unclaimed property, currently in the custody of the state. To find out if you or a member of your family is entitled to any unclaimed property, visit www.patreasury.gov. If you can prove ownership, the property will be returned to you free of charge. 
Welcome back to the Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown, and I'm with Jim DePetris, and we were discussing the Smithfield Gateway Project in a little bit more detail and the updates to the project, which is a lot. Um, you are definitely a busy man running around with, I know, the many, the many projects yeah. that you're doing in Pennsylvania, but especially this project here. And again, we're thankful that you are investing with us. Um, yes, but we were no. just, we just, before the break, we, we started talking about the office building and the, 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 the upscale kind of office buildings that you're looking to build. And just continue on that a little bit there, Jim, because I think it's really important to be able to attract um, great companies here, companies that offer, as we always say, family sustaining jobs or, or right. jobs that have um, salaries that can really help people stop that commute maybe live locally, just yes. have some good business here in an array of different types of business. Mm -hmm. um, although the tourism is, is a big piece of us, we're looking for other things as well. Right. I tell you, Rosemary, we're going to have over a thousand jobs created by this project. I mean, so it's, it's yes. going to add a lot of sales taxes, a lot of, yeah. you know, uh, good business for everyone. Yeah. Income yeah. taxes, sales Absolutely. tax, and I think the kind of jobs, like you said, there'll be some full-time jobs, there'll be some management jobs, there'll be some part-time yes. jobs to help supplement, there'll be some jobs, yes. you know, for students, there'll be a little bit of everything, and then you have right. the, the little niche there, like you said, with the certain type of, you right. know, rentals that are a little more right. upscale for people that maybe want that right. to test the market before they move yeah. into the area or whatever right. the case this may be. This type of development, and you're seeing them all over the country, it's really where people live, work, play, eat all together, where they don't have to go out on the road and you know travel to another location. Right within this 120 acres, they can basically have all their sustaining features right here. Right, nice which and is easy your, and yeah. convenience. Right. Wow, that's wonderful. Walk I mean, to get your coffee, walk to get a bite to eat, walk to yeah. food shop, you yeah. know. So it's, we're very excited about A little about mini community. It. Exactly. Right there, and I, and I want people to kind of get that vision of it to understand because right now when you drive through the area, a lot of people will say to me, you know, it, it doesn't look vibrant, it doesn't right. look modernized, and everybody enjoys mm -hmm. our country, we want it to stay that way, we want our country, right. but this is right along the main corridor, and when mm -hmm. family comes to visit, or that, you know, they want to feel like right. it's modernized, and it's clean, it's neat, well, it's fresh. that's so. why we've called it Smithfield Gateway, right. because it's the gateway into the township, right. and we're gonna do a project that Smithfield, and really the whole, area can be very proud of. Okay. We, we do uh, a great job doing a nice design, really with you know architectural features to it, so we've committed to do that here. And I think that's a good point as well, because when you first came and we were talking about you coming to the area, and we pulled the township in right away, and we pulled in uh, the, the county commissioners yeah. and PennDOT, we, we did this sort of scoping meeting, and we did this, but, but, but uh, the township was uh, very good with working with you, yes. working with us, and making sure that that they had a true dedication to the project mm -hmm. with the planning commission. And yes. it, it's a lengthy process, right. right, to go through the planning commission. And, and but, but but talk about your work yeah. with the township a little bit. Right. Well, we look at it. It's really like a partnership. You know, we come together. You need to build trust. They you know they knew who I was knew what my accomplishments have been, but they needed to see firsthand the kind of project that I'm going to stand behind in their community. Um, and there was concerns about some aspects of it, but I think we've committed our reputation on the line that this will be a first-class project with great design features, with great access, sidewalks, bike trails, you know, all the things that make this a very, uh, you know, yeah. friendly environment to well be well-rounded, yeah. all, around, well -rounded. all around. And I think the other piece, too, was along that Seven Bridge Road and 209 corridor, you know, to be able to do the four lanes, to be able to make the safety improvements, the traffic right. enhancements, you know, for the volume, but also for just normal yes. access in and out of through that corridor that should have yes. been done years ago. Right. Um, you've had a lot of work there to, to get right. property arranged and, and courteous and cordial with other business owners, yes. and um, that in itself is such a difficult thing mm -hmm. to do um, right. in order to make something work and, and be good neighbors and, yes. and all of that. And I think that's important for yes. people to know. Well, we've had to work with the nearby property owners who uh, have been very good. I mean, this is a project that will help their land values. Right. Um, there is right away, you know, that PennDOT owns that will be utilized, you know, 
in front of their properties. But I think overall, the, the adjoining landowners have seen that this is going to be a game changer, you know, for the community and for their own values right. for their real estate. Right. But yeah, Smithfield's been terrific. They have been right. really good planning commission supervisors, um, county planning commission. And that were, again, there was concerns in the beginning, but we won their trust and now right. they really want to expedite this to, to take place. And now they can envision it. Now they can see it. Now they, right. they've gotten to know what to expect with the project and the completion. Yes. And, um, and the state, obviously, we've, we've taken, you know, great. I, I am absolutely ecstatic to yeah. have you here. And um, I know the importance to the people that I represent in this district, that this is a very important piece and project. And again, right. the, you know, coming into Pennsylvania, it's pretty much a gateway right. in as well. Right. So, um, but I think the state has taken some great ownership in the project yes. as well. And we need to still keep having the state put yes. strong ownership and dedication to the project and showing that it's a great return on investment right. for no whatever question. money well, the state puts in with grants yeah, right. or anything like that. We've had a multiple well, that's a great grant. That's a great point, Rosemary, because, you know, a shopping center like this can't absorb the kind of improvements that this is demanding. So I was very happy getting the multimodal grant but PennDOT was very helpful in getting yeah. your support um, and Senator Scavallo's as well. Um, and uh, the LSA grant that we achieved from the Casino uh, you know, Reinvestment Act, that was helpful. But there's other dollars that we're, we're needing to uh, get for this project to make it happen, right. especially this loop road. We have basically the highway improvements spoken for, but our next task is conquering this monster road there right right and, and that cost once again for the people watching of that road alone three and a half million dollars three and a half million yeah. dollars and um right. that doesn't get cheaper as time gets on too it gets right. more and more expensive it's like nothing yes. gets cheaper um but that is a but large it's so beneficial for Absolutely. the community in so many ways Absolutely. the safety getting traffic off of 447 being able to get people in and out of our project safely right. so yeah now and it so is and it's a big piece of pulling it all together. So I know our dedication to try to make sure that the state continues to try to do whatever we can. And I look at the projects like this and you see the amount of jobs created, the amount of sales tax, the, the personal income tax revenues. You look at everything and then the safety enhancements, yes. it's good return on investment. Right. And each and every project, project in the state has to be looked at that way. Right. It has to be looked right. at of, okay, so there is some grant money and it's meant to help build on things that will give a return on investment right. to the people. No question. And um, so this project definitely fits those parameters. Right. So we're trying to do whatever we can, but we have gotten some uh, grants oh. for the people to know. So there is some, some yes. um, grants that have been very beneficial to keep this project going for right. a bit.